I'm running a VB overlap. Um, I'm using the AL thing as the atlas, the, our lesion file as, a, as our set of lesion maps, and I'm sending it through more because it's going to generate a lot of output. Um, so here's what this kind of looks like. Gosh, it didn't wrap around before I made the font size so big. Let me make this a little bigger. Okay, let me get another page. Okay, so what you're going to see for each of these, um, for each uh, patient, let me get to another patient. Um, you'll see the number of the mask, which is the number of the, the index of the patient in the file. Um, then the number of the mask in the AL atlas, sorry, this just repeats the name of the, number, the name of the mask, the region in the AL atlas, the name of the region in the AL atlas, and uh, the proportion of voxels uh, included in the mask and the actual percentage or whatever. Um, and of course it's zero for most of these regions, um, but you can see for some reasons, re regions it's non-zero. Since the AL atlas has lots of regions and we have lots of subjects here, um, this generates a tremendous amount of output. And it's not generally intended that you read all of it. Um, it's, it's more intended to basically crank into Excel so that you can process the, uh, these, these, so that you can use these percent, percent, percent damage measures, which is what you're really getting in this, in this last, in the in parentheses here, so that you can use these percent damage measures in, in another program. Um, I'll be the first to admit the output here is not incredibly user friendly. Uh, there is one thing that you can do that does, that does help, which is if you're interested in this particular region, you can specify it um, here using the dash R option. So if I repeat that, but I say dash R uh, 18, um, now it's giving you a little bit, a little bit more uh, information, but it's basically going through just that region for each subject. So um, it's a little better. I, I, I'm, I am still fiddling with the output on this, and at some point I'll try to make it a little more friendly. Um, okay, so that's good. It's good to know that some of our, some of our lesions ended up somewhere on the AL atlas, um, but it's not incredibly informative. The next thing I'm gonna do is try to look at our lesion coverage and uh, create a mask of our lesion coverage. And I'm going to use uh, VBIM. VBIM, as I, I think I mentioned before, is kind of a uh, Voxbo Swiss Army knife for image manipulation. Um, it basically, the, basically the, 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 the syntax for it is you, you give it the name of one or more files that you want to pass as input, um, and then you give it uh, different operators that you want to apply to those files in order. Um, each operator begins with a dash. Um, so dash count means convert all those, all those uh, lesion maps, all 24 of them, to um, a, set, a, a single map that just has in it a count of how many uh, non-zero non values that there are in each voxel. So that actually gives you a count map um, for, the entire, uh, for the entire volume. Um, but you can stack, uh, stack operators on top of, of each other. So, so after we do the count, we write that out to a file called count.nii.gz. Then we're going to threshold it at 1.5, um, which basically discards anything below uh, 1.5. I usually do something like 1.5 because I can never remember if it's uh, greater than or greater than or equal to. So um, quantize it to one and then write out a mask. So what this does is it creates a mask of all the voxels that are that where you have at least two lesions. Um, and this will just take a moment. While I'm doing that, I'm going to grab the next command, which uh, is going to overlay both the mask and the count map on. Uh, the column brain. I'm having a hard time copying and pasting. Let me try that again. Wow, didn't like that. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Typing everything correctly is helpful. Um, try to make this a little bigger. And I'll just so for this kind of view. Um, so first let's look at the mask. Um, that mask is, is supposedly all the, all the voxels where we have, where we have um, uh, coverage. Um, and now get rid of that and we'll look at the count map. Um, the count map is, is, I loaded it up as a statistical map and by default the, the threshold for statistical, map, statistical maps is 3.5. Um, that was to preserve backwards compatibility with antique versions of uh, last stuff. Um, but let's set it to zero. Um, so this is basically everywhere we, where, we, where we have at least one lesion. Um, and you can see it's a little different from the mask. Well, you can't see. Let me, let me just switch back and forth between them really quick. 
Um, so you can see the coverage is a little different between the two. That's because uh, the count map has some, some voxels that have ones. Um, so if we get rid of those, let's get the count map, we'll set the threshold to 1.5. Um, now we can switch back and forth between the two. Oops. And we can see that they, they cover exactly the same area. It's just that the mask has ones in those places because you quantized it, and the count map actually tells you how many lesions there were in each voxel. And you can surf around and see what your coverage is like. So as you move your mouse, you can see what the value is in each voxel for each of the layers. Um, so we can see in this voxel, uh, there are nine lesions out of the 24 patients. I don't know what the maximum is, but we can find the maximum. Um, well, it'll come out of one of these other commands I'm about to take. <coughs> oh, let's start right now. So if I do like this, VBIM count, or count map, and I say dash info, it tells me that there's as many as 11 lesions per, in, in a single voxel, and that's our maximum. All right, so um, I told you there was going to be a big payoff, and, and this is kind of it right now. Um, after this, you can all go home happy. Uh, the command to create a T map in Voxbo is called VBT map. Um, I should mention, by the way, many Voxbo commands are called VB something. Um, some aren't, but mo most of them are. Uh, and the reason for this is so that you can take advantage of tab completion in, in, uh, in Linux in the bash shell um, by typing VB and then hit tab a couple of times, and you'll get a list of, uh, of Voxbo commands. Um, so that's sometimes helpful if you forget what something's called, which I often do. Um, sometimes you'll get, uh, you'll get virtual box commands as well if you have that installed. VB is not patented. I just like it. Um, so here's the, here's the VBT map command. Let me just grab the whole thing and put it in, the, put it in our shell. Um, whoa, I didn't mean to actually do it. Um, so it takes, it takes three uh, sort of mandatory arguments. One is the name of the lesion file. One is your dependent measure. And one is the name of the file you'd like to create, which in this case we're calling tmap. Dan, can you talk a little bit about the format of the, the dependent measure? Oh, yeah. Um, so let's, let's just look at that continuous. Uh, that's a good point. So the format should be obvious. It's a, a one number on every line. Um, some Voxbo files actually have uh, some extra garbage up front where they say uh, VB9098 ref1 here are some interesting blah, 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 blah. Um, and, uh, and that won't change how, how it's parsed. But it's, uh, it's, it's very helpful to use a VBI command if you're not sure if a, if a file's being, being parsed correctly. So we can do VBI continuous.ref. And you can see that despite all that garbage that I just typed, it still knows that it has 24 elements with a mean of this and a variance of this. Um, so they're just text files. Um, uh, Vox, but and only one dependent variable at a time? Yeah. Um, and unlike, uh, I think MRI cron lets you, lets you create a file where you actually list the, um, the name of the lesion file um, and then a set of, a set of variables. Um, so you would, you would have one line that says 01.voi 4427, you know, whatever. Um, uh, in Voxbo, you, you keep those each in separate files, um, except, except for the lesion maps themselves, which you tend to put in a, a single file. So every, every package has its own little quirks, and I guess uh, Chris and I made different decisions about those things. Um, uh, right. So you could get by with just those three arguments, the, the name of the lesion file, the, the, uh, the um, dependent measure, and your um, output file. We've done a couple other things uh, here. One is dash n2, um, which, which says a minimum number of two lesions. One is uh, using the dash f flag, which means to flip the t values, um, because I happen to know that, uh, that this particular dependent measure is set up so that it will have good results. Um, when a lesion gives you higher scores. <coughs> and finally, um, dash Q0, which means uh, give me a, uh, an FDR threshold using a Q value of 0. 0 is not actually a valid uh, a Q value. Um, but when you say 0, it says, oh, you just want me to give you a few useful Q values. So it gives you a bunch, as you can see down here. So uh, in, in within mere seconds, you get this output uh, from VBT map um, on the screen. The first line is a warning that there are some non zero one values found in the lesion map. Um, it's worth paying attention to that in case you plan to do a regression later because those can foul up a regression. Um, they wouldn't in this case because all the values are 200, 255, but um, frequently you'll find, them, you'll find them mixed depending on the, uh, the uh, history of, of each file. Um, 
Then for the FDR calculation, it tells you how many voxels were included and the range of the p-values, which uh, with, with, any, with any luck will be from zero, somewhere between zero and one. Should be pretty close to that whole range. Uh, and then finally, the FDR threshold for various q-values. <coughs> Some people feel, feel very strongly that you should never use anything much larger than 0.01 or 0.02. Um, I don't particularly care. 0.04 is, is completely insane, of course, because it's unlikely you'll, you'll be able to defend any, any of your results. But um, I'm not going to get into FDR in detail right now. Um, the other thing you get out of this is, uh, is the number of unique lesion patterns. So there were 132, almost 133,000 um, voxels with at least one lesion, or sorry, with at least two lesions uh, in this map. Um, but many of those were parts of chunks, uh, you know, those, those little chunks that I showed you before, uh, where all, all, all the voxels in that area are lesioned in the same patients. Um, in fact, there are only 723 unique patterns, um, making up those 132,000 voxels. Um, and the last thing we found out is that that TMAP that we requested was actually written. So that's good. Um, let's see a little more about that TMAP using VBIM. I'm going to use this dash info command again. Uh, and you can see that it has a minimum T value of two, negative 2.44, and it ranges up to 8.03. So uh, that's usually a good sign that we that flipping the data was, was appropriate. Um, I guess it's possible that, well, you should always know which way is right, but uh, that's a helpful indicator. So like I said, the big path, we're now going to overlay the T-map on, uh, on top of the column brain and see what it looks like. Oops. I should have brought a mouse, I guess. Um, so I don't have much to say about this because uh, because you know these are artificial data and this isn't really an effect. But as you can see, there are there are some uh, values that exceed this arbitrary threshold of 3.5 and some that don't. So I guess that's not shocking because we we already checked and saw that there's some values as high as eight. Um, you can, if 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 need be, adjust the. Uh, well, this monitor is a little smaller than I'm used to, but. Uh, you can adjust the opacity of the, of the stat map, so I just made it a little easier to see um, in bright light. Um, yeah, um, but th 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 these are just display things. You can also uh, double click on this and adjust the, uh, the color scale if you want. Um, I don't necessarily recommend it in every case, but um, some people have strong feelings about what color scale is right for their work. Um, okay, so 3.5 is probably not the... Uh, the most justifiable threshold for that data, um, what would be? Um, well, there's, uh, as I'm sure most of you know, um, there, there are lots of different ways to calculate thresholds for imaging data, um, each with its own justification and, and situations when it's correct. I will talk about that a little bit later if, if uh, time works out. Um, for right now, let's, let me show you a few that are, that are helpful and that are easy to do in Voxbo. Um, one is uh, just simple bond for any correction. Now, bond for any correction is uh, is really overcorrection in the case in, in in most cases in fMRI, because it corrects for the total number of comparisons, which is not really the same thing as the total number of independent comparisons. However, when you have discrete lesion data, um, you have uh, an estimate of the total of the total number of independent comparisons is uh, much closer um, to the total number of comparisons if you just count the number of distinct voxels. Um, so we already did that. Here's another way to do that by using VB mask info. Um, which gives you other useful information about your masks, about your lesion masks. Um, <laughs> so as before, it tells us that there are 723 distinct voxels. That really means that you're carrying out 723 distinct uh, statistical comparisons. It could still be an over overestimate of the uh, number of 